and use it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Well, it's been one of those days where it started out with some clouds and some drizzle and turned into a beautiful day. Amen. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, our goals and objectives around here and how we try to, they're very consistent as in we want to see people meet this Jesus we talk about all the time. Amen. More than just meet them, to, to have a real encounter that changes their lives. And we do that, we, we continually try to make inroads into people's lives in, in an effort that somehow that they would get a, a grip on the reality of the message we're trying to communicate to them. So today, this, this bike blessing and, you know, all the effort that it takes to get that set up, to have some people roll through here, and the hope is you're going to have conversations that lead somebody on their journey, begin that journey. Our hope is that they would meet this Jesus, and they'd meet him by a, a very real encounter where they come to the point of decision and have to decide what they're going to do with Christ. Amen? Well, you know, when you think about trying to reach people seriously for Christ, it's not something that happens casually, to say the least. Amen? When you, when you make a, a, an effort to try to reach people, all of hell breaks loose on you. You know, and, and the truth of that is, watching, watching our guys here this evening, Jake's up and he's, he's going to sing a song in the microphone, suddenly has issues. Amen? Well, in and of itself, you'd say, well, the batteries went dead in the mic, and Caleb was nice enough to come down, and he straightened that out, and put some batteries in it, and it's up and it's running, right? Well, the truth of it is, you know, they had nothing but problems all day. They, they got out there and got knocked around uh, and weren't able to play at all outside. And needless to say, that's a hard pill to swallow, amen? Especially when you're prepared to play. But I think in our Christian life, we lose sight of those kinds of things happening to us. And when I was young in my faith, I used to think, you know, a day like today, for instance, I'd be looking at it and I'd think, you know what, I'm, I'm asking God. In fact, I was in Pastor Randy's office on Friday and I was talking about this tent. We're putting it up and the guys had one section that the wind caught and pulled the seam out completely on one section. So that's why it's got a red and white middle section in there. It would have had another section 20 feet longer than that. And I was like, you know what, we, we call out to the God of all creation. We call out to the same God when Jesus came up from sleeping in the boat onto the deck and the disciples were horrified. They thought they were going to drown. And he told the storm to be still. And the disciples' response was, who is this that the wind and the waves obey him? That's the God we pray to. So when I was young in my faith, I used to get hung up on these things like, you know, God, certainly you want us to do particular things, right? You know, you want us to reach people for Christ. You want us to put ourselves out there and make these inroads in people's lives. You want those things to happen. And what I didn't realize is that everything that happens, as the scripture says, that it rains on the just and the unjust. Amen? In other words, somebody's praying for rain and somebody's praying that it stays beautiful out. They got a birthday party. Amen? And at some point, God takes and straightens out exactly what his plan is. Now, looking at today and considering, man, I had a burden all week about those who come in and that don't know Jesus. Everybody wants to be part of a bike blessing. If you're on the roads in the state of Illinois, you need to be in a bike blessing. Amen. I mean, there's, there's, there's quarries out there that are, they call potholes, to, to say the least. But the truth of it is, I've been so burdened because just some of the scriptures 
that to realize that we pray in particular ways. And, and some of the you know, heartfelt prayers that we lay out there sound something like this. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 and following says this, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen? That sounds like something you'd want to pray to somebody about, that their, their life would experience you know, God's blessing upon them, that he would keep them, that his face would shine upon them. He'd be gracious to them, right? And uh, he'd turn his face toward them. He'd be attentive to their prayers, amen? And that they'd be living in peace. Another verse that was just hammering me was this. Psalm 20, verse 1 and following says this. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God, may the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. And then the verse that all of us know is verse 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. So I was thinking about this long and hard, about this praying blessings upon people, that we know, we know that God's desire is to draw all men to himself. God's desire is to redeem everybody that surrounds us. That's the, that's the burden of God's heart. That's why Jesus came and died on a cross. But last week, if you remember, I shared John... Chapter 3, verse 36, it says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. The burdens on my heart that are so real is we lose sight that God's wrath remains on people. You know, these, these people that came riding through here today, that we pray and ask for God's mercy on them, traveling mercies and all the things that would befall them on the road and all those things, and God hears us. But you understand, when we're outside of this relationship with Christ, God's wrath remains on us. God's wrath remains on us. And so you have to understand is that we're asking, in, in some ways, we're asking for God to protect somebody that's in a very dangerous position in this life. Because anything we do, subject to, we're subject to death. We're subject to the cause and effect of our actions. Well, you, you put yourself on a motorcycle on Illinois roads, and your risk uh, factor increases considerably. Amen. So that's just something that this week was really burdening my heart to say, I really, really, my heart goes out to these people. They're coming. There's, there's something going on. And, and we know the scripture says nobody comes to God lest he draws them. So if there's something awake in them that says they want to come to a bike blessing, it would suggest that God's doing something. Amen? And it suggests that they have an awakening enough to say that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And so when we think about how do we make an impact, how do we make an impact on the lives of so many different people? We know there's an adversary that wants to just completely derail what God's doing. There, there's no question about that. And when you see, you know, just the struggle that went on today over sound and, and these kinds of things and the discouragement that happens in the lives of those who are trying to serve in that capacity... It's huge. 
But how many times do we shrink back in the midst of that? I'm going to have to just be completely, totally honest with you. So this morning, I wake up and I look out the window, and, and I've got Dave Johnson next door already outside, and I've seen a horrific sight, him sitting out there in his bathrobe, tending the smoker that's cooking this food, right? So I don't know what time that journey, I suspect probably the middle of the night. And he's out there and he's tending it. But I'm looking at the sky and I'm wondering, I wonder what that old man's doing sitting there. I bet he's praying about what I'm looking at right now. I bet he's thinking the same thing that I'm thinking. Why is it that all week that we've seen sunny skies and then when it gets to be the day that we need it to be sunny skies, we don't have sunny skies. But the truth of the matter is this is that God creates an, uh, an environment for us to be very aware. It is an honor to serve him. It's an honor to serve him. And he does, he is the one who commands the storms, and they do exactly as he says. So then I started asking myself other questions. If there's rain happening right now, that's not catching God by surprise. So what's that about? What, what, is, what is happening in our lives that we need to be alert to or make sure that we communicate clearly? Because anybody that would come, that we speak to, what comes out of our mouth is going to affect their lives. And when we start to communicate and suggest that we have the endorsement of God on what we're doing, we better make sure what's coming out of our mouth is in alignment with that. Amen? And so... My heart being burdened, and I'm looking at this, and we're, getting, we're doing all these things to get ready. And then I thought, what, is, what about everything that we're doing is important to God? What's important to Him? And I do believe for us to press forward no matter what the circumstances, that we would just continue to do exactly what we believe He called us to do no matter what the circumstances, and leave the outcome to Him. Well, we had all sorts of characters roll through here today, and it was a wonderful time, and of course it turned into a beautiful day. But we didn't know that in the morning, and, and I just think about on our Christian life when we, we see the enormity of the calling, that we're in this world and there's so many people who need Christ and they see him through our lives, and, and we just see the, the cloudy day. We see the circumstances that aren't completely ideal for what we think they should be. And, and I'm just speaking, this is my heart just being poured out to you, is to say, in my heart I was in distress this morning until I got a hold of the emotion of that. I said, God, what do you want to do today? What needs to happen today? Maybe in the lives of us here, right here. Maybe the circle's not any bigger than right here. And maybe he wants to tell us something very clearly about it is an honor to represent Jesus. And not only that, listen, make no mistake, every one of those people who came onto this property today who do not have a relationship with Christ, God's wrath remains on them. Prayer or no prayer. Do you hear me? So we can pray that God would be merciful to them. Listen, we know that God wishes no man to perish, not one, but all come to repentance. We know that, amen? So my heart is to say, our heart's cry ought to have names tied to what we saw here today. This is just one example. We had a bike blessing and we're wore out and beat from being out in the sun and, and out there on our feet all day. But the truth of it is, seeing all those people and understanding that reality, that God has given us an opportunity and those that we had an encounter with today, we ought to have a name tied to them and we ought to be praying for them. Amen? And realize that what God has done in our life, if you've called upon Jesus to save you, if you've called upon him to forgive you, to forgive you, we, we, we lose sight in the midst of what's going on. We get wrapped up in just the conversation and the things going on, and we lose sight that these individuals need Christ desperately. They need him desperately. And when things don't go our way so many times, the first thing that happens his attitudes start going south. Amen? And when attitudes go south, we don't look very much like Christ, do we? 
I'm just thankful for this, what went on here today. I'm thankful that we just pressed through it and we had a wonderful day and we got to see some amazing things. But the truth of it is, for us as we're pressing forward on this spiritual journey and we understand that God wants to do amazing things in and through our lives and when we're asking for him, may he bless us, may his face shine upon us and all of these things, we need to have our lives aligned with him, amen? We need to be considering about, you know, what does God want to do in and through my life? What conversation needs to be coming out of my mouth? When should I have that conversation and when should I withhold it? And consider what does God really want to accomplish? Today was a very sober reality. You know, we're getting older. Some of us were having that conversation today. We're feeling our age. We're not the young guys we used to be. You're standing out there for a lot of hours, you know it anymore. Amen? Right, Dave? Amen? Amen. So, to consider, we pray these prayers, we ask God's blessing, and it's our hope that he meets us in those prayers. Amen? It's our hope that anybody that was here, they would be able to, you know, relax in the reality that there is a God that loves them, and we tell them that. We, we tell them that God really wants to rescue you, he wants to save you, and those kinds of things. I heard Drew saying all sorts of things, the who we are and what we're about. But for people to really believe it, to understand it, when we're asking them, we're saying, you know what, we're going to pray, we're going to ask God's blessing upon you, we're going to do whatever we can do within our ability to represent God to you, but at the end of the day, there's a gift of redemption and it's laying on the table right now. And we got to get it to them somehow. You know, we, we do, we pray in ways, and this, this verse in Numbers just hammered me. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let his face shine upon you and his be gracious to you and, turn his, uh, and let the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We want to pray like that. And in reality, that some of the things that are turmoil in somebody's life, the Lord is allowing to be the manifestation of, of the cause and effect of their actions. And so for us, the, the most loving thing we can do is, is try to get a position in their life. We can tell them the truth. We can say, listen, you need Jesus desperately. I'm just telling you. You need Christ desperately. We need to be praying diligently, considering we have a deposit of the Holy Spirit. We do. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 through 22. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes us both and you who stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set a seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. But we're praying today, and as I was looking at this passage, and I've been in it a lot lately, it says, God has made us, and they are yes in Christ. All these promises of God are yes in Christ. And so somehow, the mission of our heart needs to look like we believe that. Amen? Somehow we need to rise up and say, in the midst of everything we're doing, what is the purpose behind it, and, and where is God in it? Because at, at the end of the day, everything that we do that we're trying to accomplish is to show Jesus to this world. And the question is, have we received him ourselves? I mean, are we receiving grace and mercy in our lives in a way that's communicated to others? You ever see a spoiled child that just screams until they get what they want? And then the parent gives it to them, they're quiet for a little bit until they want something else, right? Well, God's grace, you know, is a crazy thing because it's undeserved favor. And God's grace in our lives, we can receive it like a spoiled brat, we could receive it without considering the cost or without considering the purpose. We receive his grace in order that we can extend it to someone else. Amen? But when you, when you consider what it is, grace is undeserved favor. 
And God has called us to make this difference. He's called us to consider the lives of those who surround us and, and prayerfully consider it. And as we look at each individual, there's circumstances unfolding in people's lives. And at every one of those circumstances, there's another opportunity to introduce Christ. And to let them understand what it is. Sometimes, you know, for us to know what it is to receive a promise from God versus a misconception of God. There's so many things that people get upset about. And when I was young in my faith, I was upset frequently with things that I believed about God that were not true. Things that somebody had said or, or somebody had taught, and it, they just simply weren't biblically sound. And as a result, they created this brokenness and discouraged attitude. The truth is, for us to understand, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Christ. Amen? And for us to be able to grab onto that reality and that to be illuminated out of our lives is to say, hey, listen, when there's a day going away that we don't understand, when something's happening around us is to thank God for everything in every situation and to look for him to see where he's at work amongst us because he's there and he's doing things regardless whether we understand or not. Ephesians 1.13 said, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed and you were marked with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit of God, he's an amazing God that he's, he's given us this seal, the Holy Spirit, but he gives us the opportunity to be guided in a way that in a day like today, we can truly have our hearts calm uh, by, by God intervening. And, and it's an amazing thing when sometimes this happens. We're in the middle of Crazy stuff is going on, and one of the guys will say, you know what, let's pray. Amen? Wise words, Dave. Amen? Very wise words. Because you know what just happens immediately? We're subject to thinking about God's doing something here. And it isn't for us to be at odds with each other. It's not to be at each other's throat. And it's not, it's not that we're victims in any way, shape, or form. Amen? We're victors in Christ. He's got a plan and he's using whatever circumstances as his ideal circumstances for us to be seen in Christ for that day. Amen? And so as you're fatigued and tired and if you've been out there and you were part of what was going on and you, you're just feeling like, wow, what's it all about? It's not We didn't get the crowd that we really wanted to see or, or maybe it was what you wanted to see or whatever. But to understand that God had his way, and he had his way in and through our lives as, as well. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says this, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. And that's, that scripture for me in my life is one that really hammers me when I, when I consider I was dead in my transgressions and sins, spiritually dead, and I've been made alive in Christ. And so for us to consider how that impacts the lives of those around us, there ought to be something radically different because we're alive in Christ. Amen? Like you can push through some harder circumstances that you can look at what's happening around us and maybe say, you know what, God, whatever it is, I want to represent you well. I want to be in tune with your Holy Spirit. I want to accomplish whatever it is today. Whatever it is today. Can we get there and say that? Can we have hearts that would be like that? Because when I consider all the things that are going on around us in our world and our culture, and what God wants to do in and through our lives, we have to come to terms with. We're just limited in this flesh to accomplish what we can do in and of ourselves outside of that seal of the Holy Spirit of God. That's where the game changes entirely. Do you understand? Do you understand when the disciples were struggling with the crucifixion of Jesus, when all those in the Old Testament that endured all the things that they endured, they did that all without the Holy Spirit's indwelling. Amen? They did it all with God leading them, but the indwelling Holy Spirit, we became the temple of God when Jesus died on that cross and he accomplished, he defeated the grave. He rose again on the third day. Guess what? 
that Holy Spirit as our deposit is what changes the game for us. It takes guys that are stubborn as mules, guys that are set in their own ways, guys that have attitudes, ladies too, yeah. and gives us a willingness to just fold our hand and say, you know what, God, you have your way here right now. And that we can let go of it. But we have to come to a point to really understand God is doing something in and through our lives. Amen? And that he wants to accomplish something in and through our lives that we have to, have to come to terms with. It's not about us. It's never about us. It's always about him. And that in the midst of our struggles, the things that are happening in our lives, he wants to accomplish something amazing. And we might see it as insignificant or trivial, but it may be monumental in somebody else's life. Somebody's watching you and they see what's going on and how you live your life. And I learned something. Somebody was talking to me today, and they were telling me that somebody was watching online, had done some just creeping, I guess, is what you would call it, online, and said that you could listen to me as a pastor. You could listen to this guy. And the reason he said that is because that he'd done a little research online. I thought, well, you know what? That's, there's nothing on, that I could see. There's some messages online or there, whatever. But the truth of it is somebody's watching you from some level, some way. And you're having an impact whether you really realize it or not. And the truth of it is, is that maybe what you perceive as insignificant or trivial, God is doing something monumental in somebody's life. Consistent, persistent, dedicated believer of Jesus. Watching for the Holy Spirit's promptings, yielding our tongue to what he has for us, and then accomplishing his very purpose. Amen? Are you guys interested in what God wants to do? Are you interested in in the circumstances of life that seem grim? Or, or are you interested in finding, you know, in the midst of something that isn't what you thought, you're, you're completely, the air is out of your balloon. You feel as if, you know, wow, I spent all this effort to try to accomplish this and this is the outcome. Can, are you interested in coming to a place to be able to say in your mind that, God, I am going to give this to you as an offering. And I want to move beyond this trip that my mind is in right now of I've wasted all this effort and everything else that's that's clogging up my head I'm going to just give that to you and what I want to come away from this right now with is an attitude that looks like Jesus right now because it's in times like that that God does huge things the years ago we had this carnival here right here right where we're at right now on this spot only there was no building and this was just a field. And we had, we had a carnival, so we just had a tent out. And I thought it was a good idea to get this little tent and do an evangelism game. And that little tent got destroyed by horrific winds and got twisted, and it looked like a pretzel. And when I came, I just purchased it, and the next day I'm here, and it's wrapped up in a, and it looked like a pretzel. And it's completely 100% destroyed. It's garbage. And I took the table that was in that and put it in our big tent that we had that was we were doing some other stuff with. And I had a Carney guy come in there, 25-year Carney. He's been on the road for 25 years doing the same thing. Came into that tent and asked the Lord to save him. And you know what I, I'm going to tell you? In the moment, I was no... It, back, that's over, that's probably 15 years back. And at that period of time, in my mind, I was, when I first seen it, I was beyond furious. And the Lord calmed my heart in an instant. And when that calming happened in my heart, that was very peculiar to me. And I recognized it as something spiritual was going on. And because I was calm and that was peculiar to me, I set up in that other tent. And that day, somebody's life changed eternally. And that same car carnival, Keith Mafia, came in the door. Amen? Back there. But the truth of it is, can we get past ourselves? 
and really get real with God to say, you know what, I have a hard time when I try to give you something, God, and it doesn't go the way that I want it to go. I have a hard time when it's not like a, a red carpet rolled out for me because I'm trying to serve you. Instead of it being a red carpet, it looks like an un, you know, like a road that hasn't even been excavated. I'm going through these things, and as I'm going through, I end up with, with twisted ankles and blisters on my feet. And I would say it's in those times when we're consistent and we understand God is doing something. And he has the ability to give us a smooth road. So if he's given us a rough road, there is a purpose behind it. Amen? And so if we can get our mind wrapped around it. I mean, there's all sorts of scriptures. They can lay them on you all evening long. You know, consider pure joy when you go through trials of many kinds. Is a trying of your faith develops perseverance. All of those things. I can recite them again and again, but at the end of the day, we have to have a trust in God that says He wants to do something in and through your life. And some days are going to be rough. Some days you're going to have things happen when you think you can't go another step further, something else is going to happen. Because the Bible says this, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, right? So when you say I can't, you just spoke a faithless statement. And my point is to say tonight that I really want to get our minds wrapped around is that God is working in and through our lives and he does it through these crazy circumstances. And here we continually are trying to mill up and look for ways to have encounters that we can let this world see Jesus through whatever circumstance there is. And the Holy Spirit of God is the deal changer. He's the one that gives us the ability to do exactly that. But we've got to submit to his authority. We've got to say, yes, Lord, and I want to tap into your promises because they're yes and amen. Amen? Are you with me? So, we press on, we consider everything that we're trying to do in the lives of those around us, but I'm just saying tonight, consider those that you have conversations and maybe you're considering them spiritual conversations. Maybe... Maybe the, your desire is to lead the conversation a particular way. But at the end of the day, God's wrath remains on those who are outside of Christ. That's reality. And he's called us to be these people that change lives. We have the ability to do that. We have to trust the fact that every day when these crazy things are going on, no matter what you're experiencing, we call upon the name of the Lord. Get around like-minded people that are going to speak those truths to you. And make those kinds of differences. Because the, the opportunities that God gives us, he lays before us. And we're going to either walk through them and, and meet him right where he's at. Or we're going to fumble the ball and just let the opportunity pass. You feeling battered tonight? You wore out, Dave? A little bit? You feeling like maybe, you know... I've done all sorts of things. Maybe the Lord's not pleased with me and that's why my life's this way. Maybe, you know, all these different scenarios we roll through our heads. But the truth of it is this, that God is accomplishing things and he's not punishing us. He's leading us to a guided life. And your life following him makes a huge impact in those who surround you. Huge impact. So consider, what does the Lord want to do with you as an individual sitting here and then corporately as this body? What does he want to do with you? How does he want to impact those that surround you? If we just get our eyes on him and consider, Lord, whatever the deal is today, I want to meet you where you're at work. I want to be you, meet you with a heart of worship, genuine worship. I want to be there and understand who you are in relation to who I am. I really want to be in awe of who you are. And then consider that in the midst of the craziest times that you're going to do something amazing. Amen? So where do you find yourself? Are you on a journey that, that maybe circumstances today, anybody that was outside and you were out there and, and the sun was beating on you and so on and so forth, you can get that and you'd understand that. Or is, have you been going through this journey of life and when the circumstances go south on you, you feel like God just gave up on you. It's over. Maybe, you know, that's for somebody else, not me. Or maybe tonight you can say, God, I just want 
to allow you to work in and through my life. And I want to have an attitude that makes that a reality. Because the truth of it is, He's always there waiting. It's us that have to meet Him where He's at work. Amen? Are you interested? Are you interested in having a heart calm? That when you find something going on in your life where your attitude's going south, to just stop. Say, Lord, I just want to ask your blessing right now on my thinking. I want to submit to your authority, and I want to see amazing things happening. We want to ask that God would bless everybody that came onto this property today. Everybody that came on this property today. And that God would draw them to himself if they are on the outside of that relationship. That he would draw them, draw them to himself. And that he would use anybody in here that has an encounter with those individuals to get it done. Amen? Wherever you find yourself, I always give an invitation, I always give an opportunity to respond. It's been a long day. And I, and I consider that on our spiritual journey, sometimes we feel like that in Christ. We feel like, man, I just want to kick back and shift into neutral. I just want to calm down or relax. And God's telling us, you know what? You're relying on your own strength. Rely on mine. Meet him where he's at work. Do what he's called us to do and nothing else. Amen? Seek him and see what he does. Amen? Well, if you've never had an opportunity to have an encounter with Christ legitimately yourself, you've heard of him, but you don't know him personally. You've heard that there's redemption in Christ, but you've never asked him. You never received that forgiveness. How about tonight's the night? How about tonight's the night? If you have, if you ask the Lord to save you and you, you know for sure, that God's wrath is not resting on your shoulders, that Jesus has paid that penalty and you're here tonight and you don't know what it is to go through a hard time without throwing in the towel on God. Every time things get tough, it's immediately, well, you know, I, I just immediately start talking in a way that would suggest I don't understand God at all. If that's you tonight, why don't you come up and let's, let's talk to the Lord about it. Say, so God, why don't you open my eyes that I could see that you're at work in the midst of anything that's happening. But wherever you find yourself in this time of invitation, would you come? Counselors, why don't you come on up here?
crashing through the pride and the blame coming straight into the heart of me Ooh, long before I ever called your name you were fighting for my victory carved in your flesh and bone you have said my soul's forgiven oh no I can feel the darkness trembling Father God, we thank you for this time. Pray for your hand upon each individual that's come through the door here tonight, that you would give them an ability to walk by your spirit with, God, with a boldness, with a sensitivity to be able to be who you've called them to be. And then, God, for everybody that's been on this property today, that you would accomplish your very purpose, that the desires of your heart, we know that you wish no man to perish, not one, but all come to repentance. And God, that you would do what only you can do to draw them to yourself. Help us, God, help us as we seek for opportunities to be seen in a way that leads people to Jesus. Help us, God, help us receive the glory. We ask it in Christ's name, amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>